Now, talking about translations, what do I mean by that? Let me just get a grid here again. Okay, now we have a pixel over here. Uh, let's make that grey so I don't unfold the whole grid. A pixel right there. And it has a certain x value of x and a certain y value of y. Translation is moving a pixel around on this grid. So if I translate that pixel 2 up, I'm going to take whatever y value that had and add 2 to it. So I'm going to undo that, move 2 up, and that will be the new translated pixel of uh, y is equal to y plus 2. Now we translate it left by 3 units. You can count 1, 2, 3, and that will be the new pixel's place. That's just translation. Translating a polygon is just basically translating all the points in that polygon with the value that you want to translate it by. Let's quickly do that. We're going to declare a new function here called translate poly. It's going to take in a polygon, which we're going to call polyin again. So polyin is a polygon. And it's also going to take in the values we want to we want it to translate by. So semicolon x, y, and those are real values. So in that, oh wait, that's to say colon, and that's going to output a polygon. So it knows what value we're going to give give back to the user when they call this function. So semicolon, then control shift C, copy that down. And this is where our arrangement of the X, Y, and Z in the array comes, comes into play. All we have to do now is run a for loop and add the X and Y values to the corresponding values in the array. So we're just going to say, I'm going to declare an identifier i, and that is an integer, and we're going to say for i is equal to 1, 2, 3, begin. And we have to declare a, a temporary um, polygon here as well, which we have to give back, sorry. So we're going to say temp poly is a polygon. So then we're going to say temp poly, the first value, which is obviously the, the x value, we have to now increment, but since we're going to use the for loop, we're just going to put simply i there. And what this for loop is going to do is going to increment i from 1 to 2 to 3, so it'll account for all the x values in that array. So we set that equal to polyins i value plus x. There you go. Now for all the y's, we're just going to say temp poly i plus 3. And what that's going to do is it's going to take i, which is 1 for the first time, add 3 to it, it'll become 4. And so it'll go 4, 5, 6. It'll run through all the y's. i plus 3 is equal to poly in i plus 3 plus y. So you're going to say result is 10 poly. Before we do our translate function, we have to first take care of something which um, was very important for this engine. And that's also that we're only drawing our polygon on the form create. We're not, uh, we're not calling that draw function ever again after that. So what we have to do is we have to go to our Delphi form over here and just attach a timer. And we're going to call draw polygon each time the timer clicks. So change that to a value of two, the interval, just two milliseconds. Make sure it draws it quite a lot. Then. On timer event, you're going to say draw polygon. So draw polygon test poly. And because we now draw the polygon over and over again for each time the timer clicks, we can do our translate function. We're going to add a button on the form here called move left. So all that's going to happen is when you click the button, it's going to say test poly is equal to translate poly. And then you give it the polygon you want to translate, which is obviously test poly. And by 1x unit and 0y units. So now that's going to translate the polygon every time we click the button. Let's see if it works. Play. And it does work. You can see that that polygon is being moved well to the right. Uh, okay, all I have to do is then change this value to a minus value and it will go to the right. 
but another thing you can notice is the polygon was smudged across the screen. And that's because we're not clearing our canvas after we draw a new frame. We're just leaving the old frame on there and drawing over it. So that'll cause that smudge to happen. And that's a very easy way, it's a very easy way to fix that. And um, I'm going to show you the way I'm going to do it first, but then we're going to do a different way, which we'll need if we want to make this a little bit smoother and actually usable. What we're going to do is we're going to call a function called clear screen. And what clear screen is going to do is it's going to run a loop in a loop. The first loop is going to go through all the x values of the screen. And the second loop is going to go through all the y values and fill those in with white. So say you had a line drawn across the screen over here like this. It'll loop through all the x values, fill in all the y values with white. Next one, all the y values with white. Next one, so it'll just, oops, it'll basically erase your entire screen running through all the pixels. For a 400 by 300 screen like I have over here, that'll take a very long time. So the program will run, it will work, but it'll be very laggy. So there's something important we have to quickly do, and uh, just keep track. It's, it's not that hard, but we have to just quickly update the type of canvas we're drawing on. Currently we're drawing directly on the Delphi 4. We're going to change to a bitmap. And all you have to do is go to your declarations of the form over here in private. You type in bitmap, which is another variable, which I just called it bitmap to make it easy. And bitmap is a T bitmap type of object. Then you go to your line drawing formula. And all you're going to do is you're going to change from drawing on image one to drawing on our new variable called bitmap. So that one has to change, this one has to change to bitmap. Now you're drawing on the bitmap. And what a bitmap, what the bitmap's going to do is it keeps a image, it keeps the image you're drawing on in the computer. And then once you have finished drawing the image, then it displays it on screen. And we display it on screen by just saying it, telling it, please draw this image on the screen for us. So we're gonna draw everything behind the scenes and then bring it up front when we're done. So we've changed now to drawing the bitmap over there and there. Then on form create, we have to first create that bitmap, which is also very easy. All we're going to say is bitmap, our variable we already declared bitmap is equal to t bitmap dot create. And that's it. Now we've created the bitmap, but we also have to state how big this picture is that we want to draw. So we're going to say bitmap width is equal to image one dot width and that'll just make the bitmap as big as the image and bitmap dot height is image one dot height what we're going to do before we draw a new frame is we're going to clear the screen first and all that you have to do there is draw a big rectangle like we do in paint uh, wait that's not a rectangle this is the right rectangle. Like that. We're just going to draw a big rectangle and then draw again. And then draw a big rectangle again and draw again. And how the computer draws a rectangle is almost exactly the same way we fill in the pixels with those four loops. It's just that it has to take a lot less middleman roots and things like that to do it. So what we're going to type to do that just before we draw our scene again, or well currently it's just a polygon, so just before we call the draw polygon function, we're going to type this line in. And all this line says is bitmap.canvas full rect, which is just short for full rectangle. And then you have to give it a rectangle to fill. And all of the rectangle we're going to fill is just the canvas clip rect. And clip rect just means it's the rectangle that clips off the screen over here. So, um, this you don't have to know why it works, how it works, that's just going to fill our screen in like we did with the for loop but much faster. So then we tell it to draw our polygon and everything on that bitmap but now we have to tell it to draw the bitmap onto the image. And that we're going to do with this image1.canvas.draw and you can see that this function wants a x, y and what graphic to draw it, what picture do you want us to draw. The X, Y is just where you want it to start. And we want it to start obviously at 0, 0, the top left corner. And then we're going to give it bitmap, which is our image that we drew in the background. And then we're going to tell it to display it there. So when you play this, 
everything's drawn and we click move left our polygon is moved left and it keeps on clearing the screen leaving no residue of where it was before there you go okay now i'm just going to quickly inform you about a few things you might want to know regarding what we just did first of all i will start with the bitmap we drew on and remember that we, what we used to do is we used to tell the computer to directly put a pixel on the current canvas we are working on and what we did with the with the bitmap was we told it to create an image somewhere in the RAM what it does then is it it updates the array in the RAM of that bitmap with the different values you wanted then we tell it okay after we've done drawing our polygon in that take this image that we drew in the RAM over here and make a stamp of it on the screen so then that is now the image you're going to display on the screen this image now stays on the screen and then we go ahead and draw our new polygon over here again once more and after we've drawn the polygon then we tell it okay now take this image that was in the RAM stamp it on the screen again then we go back and we call our big rectangle function that erases that polygon again and we draw our new the new place for our polygon or the new polygon or whatever we want then make a stamp of that again now what a what OpenGL or, or other graphics related programs does is they have something called the buffer and what they work with is they have two slates one slate is always in the background and that's always the slate that you're currently working on there's a little function that you'll use called swap buffer so what you'll do is you're going to draw on this buffer and keep on drawing on it and so on and whatnot and after you've drawn it you'll call the swap buffer function and when you call the swap buffer function it takes the buffer that was um, behind the scenes it moves that buffer to the screen and it moves the buffer that was on the screen back behind the scenes it clears it and then it draws on that buffer again so then you draw on this one then you call swap buffer then it swaps the buffers obviously so uh, this one gets moved back behind the scenes and then this one gets displayed on screen again and you just keep on swapping the buffers around like that um, and what this makes sure of is that you always display something on the screen because it's very quick to call the clear screen function but not always that quick to draw the scene so what you'd end up with if you don't have these buffers is you'll see an image very suddenly and then it'll disappear and the computer keeps on drawing and drawing and calculating and then suddenly you'll see the image again and it'll disappear so what you do is you keep the, the image that you last drew on the screen for a while and then after you've done the other image then you swap the buffers and it'll display the new image that you drew the second thing I want to talk about is our use of a timer to control the game loop now the game loop is a very important thing in in this kind of programming and what we did is we used a timer so we told it to you know draw the scene every time the timer clicks but that's a restriction because the timer can only go so fast so what they do in a game engine for example or OpenGL you have your draw loop what happens is they they call a, a while loop say while and they give a certain thing like x is not zero and inside the begin and end of this they throw our entire draw and um, translate and all those functions all go inside this while loop that means that instead of waiting for a timer to do things it'll do it as fast as it can because it'll keep on running through this loop so you'll do everything draw scene on buffer then swap buffer take input like the like the button we had then it'll say if input is escape like we said over here then x is equal to zero and because we're not going to press escape until we want to it'll keep on running through these the whole time 